Hey guys, welcome to Sheepless Needles. It's Shannon. It's me. Welcome to a vegan podcast that's not about being vegan, where we talk about all sorts of stuff. Sometimes knitting, sometimes cats, sometimes bunnies, sometimes games. I don't know. We run the gamut. Get yourself a snack, pull up a chair, grab a beverage, and uh, let's let's get to hanging out. So, um, what you guys had going on the last two weeks? Fill me in. I am going to open this beer. Sorry, Mr. Editor. And, and I'm going to fill you in on my two weeks. Oh, come on. The refreshment that is happening. Okay, so before I move on from that, let me tell you what this is. This is 10 Ton Stout Warped Wing. That is a local brewery here in Dayton, Ohio. Um, probably one of my favorite beers made locally. Uh, I think Warped Wing is probably more well known for the IPAs. I like an IPA, not as much as I like a stout. Like, I don't want an IPA in a snowstorm, but I can drink a stout year round. So. That's where that's at. So cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh my gosh, so good. Okay, so cat update. Maggie, my cat, has had no more seizures. She is totally off antibiotics. However, she will be on sub Q fluids for the rest of her life on this planet, which, given the alternative, I am so okay with. Um, she seems to be doing better now that we have her off the antibiotics. Uh, they did not agree with her at all. We had trouble with her keeping anything down. She was just very lethargic on them. She's back to playing at like three in the morning. So I feel much better in that circumstance. I don't know how much time we have with her. So I just want to make sure that the time that we have, she is happy and enjoying herself. <laughs> And I think not being on gross antibiotics is helping with that. So update there. I don't think I have any other real updates. I went to a bridal shower yesterday. Steve might insert a photo of me at said bridal shower. I don't know, or what I was wearing, or he may not. Up to you, dude. Um, I hate, 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 hate those kind of functions to begin with. And I, I think most of us do, if we're, if we're honest. But they're even more uncomfortable to me after the pandemic now because straight up, I don't know how to interact socially anymore face to face. It is so unbearably uncomfortable for me. And I would much rather just stay at home and do a Zoom call. And that is ridiculous. I need to get over it and get back into society. So wear your masks, get vaccinated, please, so that we can all maybe spend some time face to face in the future. So bridal shower out of the way. And yeah, that, that's pretty much been my two weeks. I am, I'm a little in disbelief that we are halfway through August. I feel like time has moved very quickly in one way and very slowly in another. But I, I, I'm not ready for September yet. It's just bizarre. How are you guys feeling? How's your social interaction going? Leave it. Um, all right, so let's talk about the last podcast I set goals for myself. I'm hoping you guys set some goals for yourself and let's do a check-in. Let's see how we're, how we're doing. My two goals in no particular order, cause I don't remember the order in which they came were to finish piecing together my Annie's knit club, knit club blanket and to cast on the project that I rolled for my role for initiative. Dudes two out of two goals complete. I'm liking it. I'm going to continue to set goals because they are holding me accountable. 
I need to make sure I am not setting goals that one are way too easy or that are way stretching it. So let's talk about Annie's Knit Club for a moment and I'll show that to you and we'll get through this pretty quickly. Annie's Knit Club is a program that it's an it's a club that you buy and you pay for monthly but it's an annual club so every month you get a packet and in each packet there are three skeins of yarn and a pattern book to knit three different squares of said yarn and then every month rinse and repeat right and then at the end of 12 months they send you a piecing guide and tell you how to piece it together and give you like a border instruction and that's it so I again if you if you're returning you will know about the saga of the stool that had no life for eight and a half months because this blanket was sitting on it for eight and a half months I finished it and I finished it and the only way I finished it and I have to give props where props are due to the and I will be butchering the name the virtual vegan knitting hangout oh my gosh I don't know what the name of it is but anyway during that meetup I sat with it in my lap and finished piecing it together so it is all together the only thing it needs is the border and I will do the border this fall like once we start having fires again in the fireplace well obviously we're not just gonna set a fire so <laughs> when we have a fire going I will sit with a blanket in my lap and figure out what I want to do for the border because I'm actually not quite sure how I want to do the border yet stitch wise or color wise so let me just quickly kind of show you this so you get the idea. I think I just ate like a metric ton of acrylic fuzz. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad that I did it. It brought me back into knitting in the fall of 2019. Um, so yeah, it served its purpose. I have a blanket out of it that will be complete this fall at some point. Um, the only con to this project, and it's not waste because I don't view it as waste, but it's leftovers. They send you three skeins of yarn for three nine and a half inch blocks. And on no planet does it take three huge skeins of yarn to knit three nine and a half inch blocks. So, guys, whoa, this hefty bag, see how thick that is? I don't even know if I can turn it towards the camera so you can see in it. Can you see in there? This is all the leftover yarn. I kid you not. Oh, it just keeps going. Oh, now it's just going to roll everywhere. So much leftover, enough to do another blanket which is apparently what I'm going to have to do. And I'm curious, my sister did the same project, but she's still in the midst of it. She's not completed her year yet. I would like to see her leftovers and see if she is sitting where I'm sitting. And maybe we can come up with a project together to use the leftovers for something. I don't know what. We'll figure it out. I will let you know when we do. That is a lot of friggin' yarn to have left over. And I feel like they could have done two skeins and been like, that is where I would have gone with that. But again, very easy for me to be critical. I'm very happy I did it. So that is done. That was, that was one of the goals. The second goal, and I'm going to try to get through this quickly without being overly verbose, but we know I like to talk. <laughs> um, the second goal, I rolled a D20. I wrote down 20 projects that I either had in my queue, in my library, or just things that I wanted to knit, right? 20 random different projects. I rolled my D20 and whatever the dice said was the number project I was going to do. And as fate would have it, I rolled the one project on the list that I was, and no, I'm not joking, the most intimidated by. I rolled the Slipstravaganza by Stephen West. And 
Let me just show this to you guys so you know, have a reference point here. So let me talk about the intimidation and why I felt the way I felt because I feel like someone else out there has had this feeling you're not alone. I did not join the, it was Stephen West's Mystery Knit Along 2020. I think it started in maybe October last year. I felt like I was too green to join it. Like, I, and I, to some degree, I think I might have been. I don't think I was actually wrong in that assessment of myself. However, what ended up happening is I wanted to see what people were knitting and obviously it was a mystery knit along and I you know I knew I wasn't knitting it so I don't I didn't care if something got spoiled for me so I was watching different people um, who have various you know either Instagram or blogs or vlogs start the project post it and then never post the finished project and I thought oh okay and then when I would look at the hashtag, I would see a ton of finished projects and they were frigging gorgeous. I mean, just palette choice was, I mean, just incredible. So then I thought, okay, so we've got a group of people who pumped this thing out in the five weeks or six weeks, whatever it was, and they're incredible. And then we have groups of people who started it who may, may or may not have finished it. I don't know. I didn't go backwards to, to kind of check up on them. But that all brewed in the back of my head. That there were some just stunning, stunning, and I mean, pieces of art. Obviously, you can wear it, but they were just beautiful. Stained glass. Like, I just, so impressive. So that was in the back of my head, and I thought, oh, my God, there's no way I can do that. I, I purchased yarn for it months ago. I knew I wanted to knit it. I needed something to push me into doing it. And the universe did through my D20. And here we are. I don't know that my intimidated self was correct in her thought process because while it is a, I don't even want to say labor, it's not, it's not an intensive pattern in that way. It looks much harder than it is. And that is not to say that there aren't difficult sections to it or rows in it. That is to say that you just need to slow yourself down as you would with any complicated you know, row or pattern, right? I let that get the better of me. And I think that can be said about a lot of things that I see the, the intended or the desired end, right? And I think to myself, I could never. I need to stop doing that. If you do that, you need to stop doing that. Because you can. And one, you, whatever you do is not going to be like what someone else does. We're all our own little beasts, right? We have our own deal that is equally as valid and as beautiful and as stunning as the next person's, right? So stop. Stop looking at the end project as this oh, moment, right? Because you will scare yourself. And I tend to back away in those situations. And that's, I, I'm going to learn from that. So that's the lesson of the day. Let's talk about the yarn I picked. I went to Hirschners.com. I found a cotton yarn by Willow called Willow Ambiance. It is a three weight cotton. Um, it is not the world's squishiest cotton, but it is not like dishcloth cotton. It is, it's in between. 
It's 100% Egyptian cotton. I picked it because I fell in love with a color. And then I looked at the color. I was like, okay, it's a three weight. I can make this work. And the pattern does call for fingering, but I think with shawls and I, this is, and I may be wrong on this and I don't know that I care if I am or not. Um, with shawls, because you're not fitting them like a sweater. I think as long as you are creating the type of fabric or drape that you want out of your fabric, pick your yarn, like, and pick your gauge, pick your needle off of that. Just because the pattern called for fingering doesn't mean I need to use fingering, but I do want to pick, particularly for this pattern, a yarn that has good stitch definition so that you can see the patterning, right? So that is why I picked this yarn. And I picked, it's a four color, it's a four color palette. And this is what I picked. And from left to right, we have Aloe, Celestial, oh, Refresh, is this lighter blue over here? And then Midsummer. Uh, I love the palette. And I will show you where I'm at with the pattern. And this is going to be a little difficult to show because it's still on the needles. But we're going to we're just going to go with it. <laughs> okay. So here, let me back up past the boom here. All right, so that's section one, right? Which I love. It's like a honeycomb, right? And then you come up and here I'll kind of Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but section two is that kind of like crisscrossy with the aloe. And then section three, which uh, please don't come off the needle. Please, 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 I don't have stoppers on. Yikes. Is kind of this. All right, so it's like going to be diamond, diamonds that come up in the main color, and then bricks behind that patterning of the contrast colors. It's going really well, guys. I don't know. I mean, I know why I was intimidated. And I think there are areas of the pattern that you do need to be careful in terms of counting and all of that. And I did, I did learn a trick in my own life that I will pass along to you, particularly if you live with another human being or an animal that interrupts you. Well, humans are animals. If you live with any entity that could possibly interrupt you. Okay. <laughs> the transition between section one and section two is not overly complicated. It's just you need to pay attention. Like it's not a complicated pattern. You just need to pay attention. There's a massive amount of increasing going on. And there's some yarn overs involved in that increasing. And you just need to count carefully, right? I made the wise decision of waking up, having my coffee, taking care of the bunnies, all that good stuff, and doing the transition before my husband woke up. <laughs> because he has a habit of entering a room and not checking to see if I'm in the middle of something. And he will launch into a conversation that I actually want to hear about. But I am in the middle of counting. And literally, the words that will come out, would you? Zip it, dude. I'm counting, right? So just if you pick up this pattern, when you finish section one and go to begin section two, make sure you do it before said entity could interrupt you. And you'll be aces. So that's how it's going. I love it. You guys, I love the pattern. I love the fact that once you start knitting it, the minute you start to get like a little bit like, uh, getting a little bit bored of doing these stripes or whatever it is, you move on to something else. You move on to a new section. You move on to a new color. I love that. And I think I love that about Stephen West's patterns is that they're frenetic in that way where it's not a static pattern, right? There's always something that's going to jump your mind a little bit and get you out of the doldrums of like just stocking it stitching. 
and there's nothing wrong with stockinette stitching like in general but i'm just for me i like that change up it, it just keeps my interest in the project going so i think my goal on this well my original goal was obviously to get it on the needles and i did that so goal number two reached boom um yeah I, d I did both goals goal number one was to piece together the blanket goal number two was to i'm good okay so anyway in doing the pattern it has six basic sections to it and my original thought was like oh one section a week and then i was like what am i thinking because i know by the time you get to the end sections they're going to be a gazillion stephen west stitches like a gazillion right so i I did section one in a week. I did section two at the beginning of week two, and I started section three at the tail end of week two. I don't know if I'll have section three done by the end of the week three. We'll see. I will have it done by the end of week four without a doubt. So I think as the sections progress, I'm going to have to tack on some time. When I set up the project in Ravelry, I think I set my end date as November 1st. I want to try to have it done by October 1st. But we'll see. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna set that type of like limit on me at all. I'm just glad that I got it on the needles. I'm glad I'm knitting it. It's been fun. I'm having a good time with it. Cheers to having fun with a project and not crying. Oh my God, so good. You guys, the beer is so good. Okay, so that's it. I, I don't wanna make this a long and outdrawn episode but I do want to talk about the fact that I was intimidated by that pattern and how that type of intimidation has bled into other parts of my life that I've kind of realized recently and I'm working on this. So I want to put this out there because I don't think I am the only person that does this and I want to make sure that you, if you're out there, you are not alone and 110% with you. Okay, I'm a D&D &D player, right? I love Dungeons and Dragons. I love high fantasy settings. I love sci-fi settings. It doesn't have to be Dungeons and Dragons. It could be Tales from the Loop. It could be Alien. It could be The Expanse. You name it, I'm down for it. But what will inevitably happen to me is when I start like a new uh, tabletop game or a new campaign, I have a comfort level with a certain type of character and then the more complicated characters become, I get intimidated. And like with gaming, it's the same thing with the knitting, with Slip Stravaganza was a great example of that. But with Dungeons and Dragons, there is a character type called a warlock. And this would be like 5e um, for those in the know. <laughs> and I've never played a warlock. And I've been in two separate campaigns with someone playing a warlock. And every time I feel the same way like, it's so friggin' complicated. I, I just, I don't need that in my life. And I've even DM'd for someone who was a warlock. And I didn't even know the warlock rules. So I was just hoping that they knew what they were doing because I certainly wasn't going to be a rule monger on it because I would have had to get the book out every two seconds. It just felt overly complicated. I am never going to do it. In the same way that Slip Stravaganza was overly complicated, I'm never going to do it because look at the end project that other people put out you are never going to be like that you are going to be one of the people who starts it and never finishes it and so you don't do it right you tell yourself that and you don't do it well obviously somewhere in the back of my head there is a cog that turns that says i hear this inner monologue of you saying you can't do something but <laughs> can and that inner monologue or that cog that was turning is what caused me to buy the yarn from Willow Yarns or from Hirschner's, whatever it was, months before I started the project. So somewhere in my head, I was gearing myself up to do it. I just needed the push. The push was rolling the D20 and the universe just decided. <laughs> oh, language. I'm really sorry. Not for children. I'm two beers in. Come on. So anyway, I apologize. I will try to clean that up. I feel the same way about warlocks because I don't understand the mechanics of the character. 
And therefore, I was like, I am never playing a warlock. I don't want to DM a warlock, whatever it was. Warlock, not a happening, right? So I did exactly what I did with buying the yarn at Slipstravaganza for the Slipstravaganza. I bought this. This is a book or a campaign setting uh, by Apotheosis Studio. They did a Kickstarter for this, but I found it after their Kickstarter, so I just pre-ordered it. It is a campaign setting in a city that is a safe haven for warlocks. So everything in it is warlock driven. It is warlock 24 seven. And I started reading it and I have a, like, I think I really like warlocks. <laughs> in the same way that gear in the back of my head or that cog in the back of my head that's turning that says, you're intimidated by this because you don't understand it. So I am going to make you somehow gear yourself up push the button and go, right? Somehow my subconscious is so far ahead of, of what I know is going on because I did this, I bought the yarn for Slip Stravaganza, and then I'm showing myself that I can do it. So if you are one of those people who gets intimidated and backs away, it's okay. If you back away a little bit, arm yourself. Learn about what you're backing away from. Keep learning. And eventually you'll realize in the process of like gathering information, you are tiptoeing closer and closer instead of backing away. You're just tiptoeing, a tiptoeing through the tulips, and eventually you'll get there. I don't know how soon I will build a warlock character. I have to find a group to game with because my third group <laughs> fell apart due to scheduling, which I'm just about done with. It's a bummer. Those who play D&D &D will know exactly what I mean by scheduling conflicts. So that'll be the next goal is to find a new gaming group and that's another beast altogether. But what I think I have learned about myself, and this is why I think knitting is so fabulous because you I think you just learn things about yourself that you didn't know were going on. It's such a weird thing. I, I don't know what it is, but I may never be a Stephen West, right? I may never be a pattern writer. I may never be that great of a knitter, but I'll be damned if I'm going to let something intimidate me to the point where I'm not going to try. So always try. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You end up with extra yarn? I don't know. I mean, come on, let's do this. Let's do it together. Let's get through this. Okay, so that's it. That's what I got for you today. Really quick question though, and I want your honest, honest answer to this, and we'll get into this in the next podcast. How do you guys use patterns? And by that, what I'm trying to ask, and I'm not asking it very well, do you print a PDF and use like printed pages? Do you use like something like an iPad or a smart notebook or like a tablet? And do you just do your pattern off of that? Do you, if you do that, do you have like a pencil, like a, a note taking program on said smart tablet that you do on top of the pattern? Do you use a book and do you knit out of patterns out of books? Leave it in the comments because I am trying to figure out different ways of utilizing patterns. And I just kind of want to see where everyone's at with that. I have a preconceived notion of what the response is going to be, but I could be completely wrong. So in the comments, please comment, what is your preferred method of knitting from pattern media wise? And let me know and we'll get into it next time. It'll be a fun little convo. Um, I don't... You know my goals for right now for the next podcast I'm gonna finish this beer and I think within two weeks if I can't finish this beer we've got another problem altogether but I think my goals for the next for this upcoming two weeks I want to have finished section three of the slip stravaganza if I finish section three I want to put it down 
and I'm going to start another knitting project that my husband has asked me to start, which I will start. And I think, so that's, that would be goal number one, get through section three. Goal number two will be to cast on husband's project. And then goal number three, and this is going to be like, not really my goal, because it's going to depend on my sister. We're supposed to be knitting a hat together. Well, separately knitting two different hats um, together for our significant others who both are named Steve, which I love because my Steve was the first Steve. Her Steve came next. So we call him the deuce, which I think is hysterical. So it's Steve and the deuce. Anyway, we're knitting hats for Steve and the deuce, right? Um, she picked the pattern, but I'm waiting for her to tell me when she's ready to cast on. I already have the yarn for it. I have not done a swatch. Okay, let me reel this in. Goal number three, do a swatch of the yarn that I bought for the hat that I'm knitting with my sister. There's my accountability. What's your accountability? What are you doing in the next two weeks? Are you two going to finish at least one beer in two weeks? I'm like, so good, you guys. Okay, be kind to yourself as always. Be kind to yourself. You can't be kind to other people when you aren't kind to yourself. Let's get it together. Let's love ourselves. Let's love one another. You know, what else are we going to do? We're not here that long. Let's enjoy the beer while we can. And if your beer is water, if your beer is a noon, if your beer is a vitamin water, if your beer is V8, enjoy your beer. I'll see you guys. Toodles.